And do you know what? I've got so many stories to tell you at the moment, but I've got, I, I haven't got time to tell any of them because we must do an email catch-up programme today. A lot has happened since the last show, and I ain't got time to tell you. It's a liberty, isn't it, dear? But never mind. Straight to the emails. I will say, though... You know I can't go straight to, but I have to tell you something, something of my sad, lonely, pathetic life. I will say that um, last night I started moving stuff out of the Mirable Studios. There are now big gaps where I've started moving stuff into the spare room in preparation for the decorating, which will be done in this room. Uh, not quite sure when, when my niece and her boyfriend can come and do it because they need a little bit of money. So Uncle Chris to the rescue. Da, 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 I am the knight in shining armour, boys and girls. Yes, I've got off my horse. Eee, eee, given it an apple and gone to the rescue with a little bit of cash, my dear niece. And in exchange, she will come and decorate the Mirable Studios and probably my um, kitchen as well and in fact I'm actually going to move the studio around a bit so that I am at the moment I'm facing a wall with lots of pictures I'm going to turn it around so I actually face out the window which I think will be quite nice and also with the natural light I won't have to turn the lights on you see more money saving ideas from yours truly hello to you welcome along this is Chris Reardon today's United Kingdom talk I have three times a week talk show available uh, on whatever days your radio station plays it out or indeed uh, by podcast from United Kingdom talk dot co dot uk by audio podcast or indeed video podcast uh, via YouTube at the same address United Kingdom talk dot co dot uk and you can find uh, new shows every tuesday thursday and saturdays round about 12 o'clock midday uk time all right new shows uh, via podcast from united kingdom talk dot co dot uk every tuesday thursday and saturday or indeed playing out on your local internet or indeed little fm station on various days see your station guide for details all right so that's it i've moved a little bit around in the studio i also have now behind me my friend justin who i work for i only work for him once every couple of weeks now at the uh, steam coach in uh, hemel hempstead on friday nights so i do some djing for him there and he bought me an on-air light oh yes i have behind me today an on-air light what they have in proper stu- well i mean this is a proper studio dear well, it's a converted bedroom. I mean, you know that. But the gear in here is, is like, proper. And now I have a red on-air light. The strange thing is, on the camera, it doesn't look red. It looks white. So if we've got any video people watching, why would that be? Now, the camera I use is not a real video camera. It's a, it's a high-end webcam. So is that anything to do with it? I mean, I've, you see, the thing is, I've got today... Since we last spoke, I've got a camera story where I went to, to inquire about video cameras. I've got a story about my asthma. I've got a story about an ambulance. I can't tell any of them. We can't do it today, OK? We must go to the emails, first of all, from Suko. Oh, and incidentally, if you want to join in, there's an email address to the show. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. So here we go with the emails. I've only spoken for four minutes. Carl in Yorkshire will be very impressed by that. Four minutes I've spoken for and gone to the emails. Because sometimes I say, of course, I can hear what you're saying now and get on with it. I am getting on with it, dear. This is it. There isn't any more. This is it. People often say that. Will you get on with it? I am doing it now. If I can, just get a word in edgeways, please. Um, yeah, Carl would say, oh, oh, I can't believe you only spoke for five minutes. Because usually I say, I just want to tell you this before I go to the emails. And then half an hour later, we're still talking. But we do like and natter, don't we, you and me? Eh? We do. Yes, you. I told you, you. We like and natter, you and me. Here's the email address. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Now, you may remember a couple of shows ago. I just lean back here. I received, oh, I just, sorry, just banged the microphone. I received in the post Cristiano Ronaldo figurines. Right, there he is. 
I turn him around so that you can see his little bum as well. Cristiano Ronaldo figurines. It's like a, uh, it, it, it's, he's got a great big head and a tiny body. I mean, to, to be quite honest, if he came around looking like that here, I'd send him away. But you do know, let me just put that back. You do know, of course, regular viewers and listeners of the show will know that I do have a bit of a soft spot for Cristiano Ronaldo, who incidentally shares his birth tea with me, I found out the other day. So, I mean, I can see in the future, eventually, when he, when he plucks up the courage to ask me for a date, I can see us sharing large birthday parties, possibly all over the world in one of his houses. Which would be lovely, wouldn't it, eh? I think I, think I quite like that. Anyway, uh, we weren't sure who they were for. And here is the solving of the mystery, OK? Dear Chris, those figurines of Cristiano Ronaldo were from me. I was hoping David would put in a note that it was from me. And that's from... Suko and David is the person. What she did, I think she bought them from someone on eBay. Oh, what was that? Wait a minute, something's just fallen. Down. Oh my God! Cristiano Ronaldo's just fallen off the shelf. One minute, where's he gone? Oh, there he is. One minute. Oh dear. You're right, mate. Oh, sorry. I'm sure you've been kicked worse than that on the football pitch. I'll never kick you, Cristiano. You can have a lovely fried breakfast every morning when you move in here. Don't worry. You don't want to live in that. He probably lives in a great big posh house. And he, I bet he hates it. I bet he hates it. He'd, he'd be much happier living in my free bedroomed in Terrace House here in Royal Berkshire. I do feel that. Anyway, so there's the, uh, there's the answer to the mystery. It was from Suko. So thank you, Suko, for my Cristiano Ronaldo figurines. And uh, she did put in the email that one was for me and one was for Jimmy, my, uh, my nephew. Now, where's that bit of it gone then? I'm sure it said here one of them's for Jimmy. I don't know if Jimmy's going to like it. One minute, I'm just going to ring my little nephew and we'll see what he says, all right? Let's see, see if he wants the Cristiano Ronaldo figurine. La da da. Boop, boop. Who is it? Hello, sis. It's my sister on the phone. Um, is, uh, is Jimmy there? Uh, all you got, you can ask him yourself. Uh, Suko in New York has sent me two Cristiano Ronaldo figurines because she knows I like him. But one is for Jimmy. Now, would Jimmy like one? It's only like a little, little, um... Okay. Yes? Who is it? Who is it? Is that my nephew, Jimmy Butler? Do it, do it. <laughs> Here, um, do you like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo? OK, uh, Suko in New York, have you heard of her? Yes, of course you have. She has sent me a Cristiano Ronaldo little um, figure. It's about, let me have a look. Oh, do you know what an inch is? Do you know what an inch is? An inch. OK, it's about two inches high and about half an inch wide. And he's got a big head and a little body and he's kicking a football. Do you want one? A figurine. A little character thing and you can put it on a shelf. OK, then, I shall send to you. So, can you say in a really loud voice, because I haven't got my phone thing hooked up, could you say, thank you, Suko, wait for it. Do it now. Thank you, Suko. Can you do it again? Thank you, Jimmy Butler. Aye, 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 aye. Goodbye. There we are. There you go, Suko. My nephew would be pleased to have one, and I shall... I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put that on the floor. Because I find when, when I've got things that I want to take downstairs or whatever, if I put them somewhere on a shelf in front of me, I completely forget. So what I do now, and it's like... Um, Invoices. If I'm going to work one night, I have to produce an invoice. It's all done quite legally. Um, and if I print the invoice out and I, I, I get it from the printer later, it will be forgotten. So what I have to do now with things is put this must be Alzheimer's setting in, isn't it? It is absolutely Alzheimer's. So what I have to do is print it off and put it on the floor, on the carpet at the top of the stairs. And I don't forget it. How clever am I? <laughs> yes, so I shall be sending the Cristiano Ronaldo figurine to my little nephew, Jimmy Butler. All right, thank you very much for that, Suko. Much, uh, much appreciated. Off to Norway now. 
And it's Leo, our friend Leo. Hello, Leo. He says, hello, Chris, my pod man. I quite like that. Pod man. I'm a pod man. Pod man. We would, it must, must be a, someone write a tune. Chris, the pod man. How would you do that? I don't know. The podcaster supremo. You know, I've told you before um, that I now do a, a live um, radio show on another station. And they've done me this jingle and it says, the podcast, the Supremo, Chris Reardon. It's a very powerful jingle. We love it. I can't play it out oh, because obviously this is on other stations, but a uh, nice little jingle that is. Anyway, hello, Chris, my podman. It's morning here. He actually sent this on the 3rd of February, uh, just before my birthday, actually. It's morning here. And when I write this, I am sure you are in your bed and will be for some hours to come as it's 5.20 a.m. Well, actually, 5.20 a.m., uh, Leo, usually at that time, I've only been in bed for an hour or two, OK, because I do go quite late. Heard on the radio and saw on the telly that you are in the middle of a cold and snowy period in England. Yes, we are. And it's vile. We ha Well, I hate it. I hate it. I heard... Uh, you know, I was talking about that little girl on the last show who went flying down a hill on a sledge and um, and died. Very sad. Uh, I heard uh, again um, on the news last night on the way from work another little. I think it was a little, and I think it was another, another little girl was playing. And we we hear these stories all the time. She was playing on a frozen pond, and the ice cracked, and she fell in. And it's, yes, another one died. I'm afraid it's just awful. Please. Do not play on ice. It's so dangerous. What happens? I mean, I don't think people are killed by slipping into the water. I think what happens is that they fall down and then they move away from the hole that they've fallen down. So when they try to get back up, it's ice. And I, there must be, it must be impossible or something to break the ice from underneath. I, I don't know. Maybe someone knows about that, but another little girl has died now and it's just dreadful. Um, Leo says, as I know from your statements that you don't actually love the white stuff, snow, no, certainly not. This must be really hard on you. Yes, it is. I mean, it's the end of the world. I'm telling you now, we need more global warming. It's funny, isn't it? Um, and he says, you have my sympathies in that respect, I assure you. Yeah, I hate it. And it's funny, you know, while we're sitting here, um, some of the worst snows that we've had for two decades, Australia are having some of the worst heat that they've had for since records began. Did I hear temperatures of 47 degrees in some parts of Australia? We here in the UK can only imagine temperatures like that. I've got to be honest, I'm uncomfortable when we get to about 90 degrees um, Fahrenheit, which, uh, what's that, uh, I think about 32, 35 degrees. I'm all right up to about 35. After that, I start getting very uncomfortable. But there are parts of Australia that have had 46, 47 degrees and terrible, terrible fires. Always terrifies me, fires, does it you? Oof, it's just awful. And um, forest fires, people have lost their homes to fires. Terrible. You know, one side of the world, they're, they're overheating. The other side of the world, we're freezing cold. It's mad, isn't it? We all need to move to the middle. <laughs> I don't know, where, where, where would the middle be? I suppose somewhere like um, Spain or, or Turkey, somewhere like that. Do these, these places don't suffer from extreme heat like that, do they? I heard on the radio also that Melbourne the other day was, like, deserted because no one was going out. They're all staying inside trying to keep cool. Terrible. I mean, I'm a great fan of hot weather and sunshine, but, I mean, it's a bit much, isn't it? Leo says, the sun is on the rise in the southern skies at this time, uh, 5.20 in the morning, he's talking about, in February, and the days are already about two and a half hours longer than in midwinter. So it's going the right way, and it helps a lot to be an optimist. Yes, we are now on the way to spring. We've gone past midwinter, or you, you, you know, you... you You'd be hard to believe it, to be honest. You'd be hard-pressed to believe it. You would. Now each day is five minutes longer than the day before. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it, eh? We're, we're, we're on the way to spring and summer again. Meanwhile, enjoy indoor activities and go for a long walk in the cold air, preferably each day. 
when spring at last arrives, there will be less time to do things indoors. And that's just how it is. Yes, I do. I do go for reasonably long walks and swimming. That's my exercise thing, as you probably know. I don't do the jogging anymore because uh, my knees were becoming damaged, all right? So and n since I stopped the jogging, no problems with the knees. So there's your answer. And that's what the doctor said. The doctor knows all, doesn't he? Yes. I know some people, they don't trust doctors, do they? I mean, what do you think he's going to do? <laughs> you know, I, I have immense trust in uh, doctors and uh, medical people. When you have gone for a long brisk walk, say 30 minutes to an hour, it's so good to return home again and take a refreshing shower, for instance. In a way, one generates energy by using energy. Do you get my meaning? Yes, I do, yeah. Like you do when you're going for a session of swimming. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've gone swimming before. And let me just get my bin, get my bin in place. Um, and... Often I've gone up the road and I think, oh, I can't be bothered to go swimming today. But once you've done it, you feel marvellous. And, you know, you come out of that swimming pool and we've got lovely showers as well in the uh, swimming pool I use. And you have a shower and they provide all the soap and the towels and all that. Oh, and it's just lovely. i tell you what is really minging. Going swimming and not having a shower afterwards. That is just vile, isn't it, eh? I mean, even after the shower, you, you smell of chlorine, although it, it is a, a rather clean smell. It's not a dirty smell, is it? But actually going swimming and then straight out of the swimming pool, dry yourself and get dressed. That is just so minging and vile. It is. You must have a shower afterwards. It's funny, actually, you know, when you're at school and you go on the school thing and you all go swimming together and no one wants to use the showers afterwards. What's all that about? <laughs> He carries on to say, onto something completely different. I have seen your bulbs. Yes, I've seen your bulbs, but I mean the hyacinth bulbs, of course. In a different stages of evolution. Yes, you have. You have. When I first planted them, I showed you the pot of earth, basically. And then I, I think I showed you a bit when it was sticking his little head out of the top of the pot. And then, of course, um, last uh, couple of weeks, you saw the flower in its full bloom. And now the flower's gone. So I've put the pots outside. He says, it's fascinating how much energy and power is stored inside seeds, corns and bulbs. Well, it is. Hey, you get that tiny little seed. Have you ever seen a tomato seed? OK, well, if you haven't, just cut open a tomato. They're tomato seeds. From one seed grows an entire another plant. And it just amazes me how all that happens. All in the space of nine, six to nine months, the entire, the entire plant germinates, grows to however high, you know, a couple of feet high, produces loads more tomatoes and dies. The circle of life, isn't it? Given the conditions um, the bulbs and things prefer, he says, will make them explode in almost a relatively short time span. I agree with you that hyacinths smell wonderful. They Oh, they really do. It can be too much if you sit next to them, though, and some people can be allergic to the scent as well. Oh, no, not me. Lovely smell. He says, then amaryllis is better in that way, that they have no smell at all, but how beautiful and majestic they are when they are in full bloom. Uh, I like fragrant flowers. Um, roses, hyacinths, freesias, and especially, I like, personally, the big pink tiger lilies. The smell of those is just beautiful. You know the ones I mean? But you've got to be so careful of the pollen, because you get it on you. If you get it on your fingers, it looks like you've been smoking for 20 years. <laughs> Have we got any smokers? Yes, that's it. Hide your fingers now from me, dears. I can... I, oh, I can smell your fingers from here. You smokers out there, yeah, you're a bit there, puffing away. Will people not smoke while they're listening to this programme, please? This is a smoke-free programme. If you don't mind, if you're going to have a cigarette, put me on pause. That's it. Put that fag out now. Incidentally, uh, the Americans watching, fag here in the UK is another word for cigarette. OK? Just to put you right there. <laughs> um, Leo goes on to say... 
Um, let me see. The amaryllis have now been added on as the most popular flowers around Christmas time for some years now, in lots of different colours, ranging from dark red through to pure white. He said, then why did your hyacinths tilt and go limp? I don't know. You tell me. And he does. First, they prefer rather cool growing conditions, originally being a spring flower actually out in the garden. Next, and now this make actually, that makes sense. That makes sense because the two here in the Mirable Studios, where the window is usually not open, limped. OK, they went limp. They fell down limp. And once they've gone like that, girls, you know, they're no good anymore. The one in the bedroom, I had two in the bedroom. One didn't come up, actually. And funnily enough, yesterday, I emptied the pot to see why it hadn't come up and the bulb had completely gone rotten and just disintegrated. So that explains that. But the other one in the bedroom did not limp. And guess what? I usually have the window open in that bedroom, except when it's really, really cold. So there's your answer there. So you're quite right there. They prefer cold weather. Next and very important, he says, always turn the pots 180 degrees each day. They will always grow towards the light. Give me the light. Usually, that, be that being the window, if standing on a windowsill. Yeah, and that is something I actually do. He says, it's the same in my greenhouse. Have to turn the seedlings and young plants 180 degrees to get them to grow straight. That is most noticeable on sunny days. Remember that the sun is never in the northern skies here on our upper part of the world. If you don't count the midnight sun, that's something I'd like to see, actually, the midnight sun. Is it, is it as bright as daytime? Is it, is it just like day? Or does it get black and there's a great big yellow glow in the sky? Because I don't know. I would, like, I would like to see the midnight sun. He says, if you don't count the midnight sun in the summertime north of the polar circle, that is. Um, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Uh, that is how it is with flowers and plants. And the same goes for people as well, you know. He says, you never turn your back towards the sun if you want to get tanned on your chest, do you? No, of course you don't. Hope I don't sound like too teacher-like. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. But that is a field uh, that's my hobby and as mentioned before. Listen to your show regularly. And as a matter of fact, before I started this mail, I looked up your website to see if you had posted today's Tuesday show for Tuesday. But alas, no, too early to expect from a night working DJ like you. Uh, greetings from Leo in Norway. Well, actually, um, on my website, um, on my website, you'll find links to the video show, as you know. Um, hang on, which, web, which part of the website? I think you mean the United Kingdom Talk, yeah. UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Here's, here's a little tip, right? UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk is the main website for the show. Now, the podcast show appears on there Tuesday, Thursday and Saturdays at 12 noon. OK, Tuesday, Thursday and Saturdays at 12 noon. The video show actually goes a bit earlier. Usually um, the night before, but really late, OK? Now, the reason is for that, sometimes uh, the video side of things, there might be a little problem with the end that hosts the video, either YouTube or Blip or, or, or one of those, right, that sometimes it takes a bit longer to convert it to the format that they require. So that's why I now send it up earlier. Usually you can find the Tuesday show up on my main website, which is chrisreardon.co.uk. All right, chrisreardon.co.uk. Only the video side of it. You usually find that up there on Monday night, very late, or Wednesday night, very late. We're talking about midnight UK time. So that then I know it's going to be there for the morning. So it's a, a little thing there, if you ever want to see it a little bit earlier. All right, thank you, Leo. Talking of plants, actually, I want to go out and get some more plants for the house. Um, because I don't really have... I have some... Well, I've got this... These are real... Incidentally, any plants that you ever see on the uh, video side of things are real. All right? I don't do plastic plants. I think they're dreadful. I mean, they've even got one. They've got this, this horrible plastic plant in the doctor's surgery of all places, dear. 
You wouldn't think they'd have dead things in there, would you? But I, I really don't like plastic plants and pla oh, plastic flowers. It's awful. When I go to the grave and um, do my mum's grave, mum and dad's grave a, a couple of times a year, um, I, th I should go a bit more often, really. Um, maybe, maybe do it up. I, I generally do it twice a year, once in the spring and once in autumn. So the spring lasts for the summer and then the autumn lasts for the winter. And sometimes I see other graves and they've got plastic flowers on them. And, you, and they've only got to be out there for a, a few months and they start fading. And they just look horrendous. Have, have you seen that? Have you seen that before in graves? Oh, for God. you know, it would be better in all honesty. It would be better not to have any flowers at all. Maybe just those little um, little colored stones. Like I know uh, my nanny, my, one of my nannies, Nanny Ryan. She's buried in the same cemetery and she's got green little stones. What are they called? Stone. I think it's stone chipping. Are they called chippings? I don't know. And she's got that on top. And if you, if, you know, if you haven't got the time to, to go to the cemetery or something like that, then fair enough. But please do not put, oh, don't put those awful plastic plants on your loved ones. <coughs> That's just awful. Thank you, Leo. So I'm going to get some spy. I think I want to get a spy for the house. I want to get plants that take in the carbon dioxide to make the, the air fresher in here. And I've been told to get spider plants and peace lilies. So um, I don't know what the time is now. It's probably too late now. But um, I'll probably go down at the, the uh, garden centre next week and get some of those. They're not very dear, those ones. If anyone else know what, what plants oxygenate the air really well, please let me know. Usually email address, chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk okay uh hello this is from you see i haven't got a name on here the trouble if, if you put your comments on the youtube i do get your username but i don't get any other names so uh this is from roger willow coconut too <laughs> i don't know what's your name we don't know your name and he writes He's talking about uh, three shows ago, I think. Uh, the shirt and tie looks divine, darling. Chris, happy birthday and many more. Have you dug it? Have, have you dug out from the snowstorm? Yeah, just about, mate. I had a lovely birthday. Yeah, it was, was all right. Yeah, nice birthday. Thanks for sharing the pictures of your handsome family. Your sister has a lovely home. I think you should take time to stop and smell the roses. Yeah. You're not the first one to say that to me. Um, he says, just remember, this is not a dress rehearsal. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Um, Thanks for that. I don't know your name. Thanks for that. But um, you're quite right. I've come across... I, I like to talk to elderly people. I find them so full of conversation. And a couple of them have said to me, you know, you're going too fast. Stop. You're not seeing anything. You're rushing through life. Just take a bit of time out. Well, of course, I have started doing that, as you know. I now have Tuesdays off and every other Friday. And I have my Saturdays back again since I gave up the very late, late Friday night job. So I am starting now to, to pull back a bit. But I like to sit here and share it with you. This is not like um, doing this particular show. It's, it's not like rushing through life, is it? We've got an hour to have a chat three times a week. That's, that's lovely. It really is. Thank you for that. Um, I was listening to Joe. I didn't know Joe from AmericanTalkUSA.com. I knew he played the guitar, but uh, Joe plays the um, guitar by ear. He listens to a tune and then plays it. And that, do you know what, Joe? I don't know if you knew that, but that's how I play the um, piano and organ, the church organ. I listen to the hymn and then I play it. I can't read music very well at all. Like um, a child learning to read is how I read music. So there we have got something in common there, Joe. I didn't know you played the, uh, the guitar by ear. Joe is another podcaster. And you can indeed listen to him at, um, he's American. And it's americantalkusa.com. americantalkusa.com to hear about Joe and his guitars and everything else that he does. Okay. Right. A um, couple of late birthday Bits and pieces have come in here. First of all, from... Uh, where are we now? There we are. From Peach. 
I think it's Peach. Again, I haven't got a, a name at the end. People keep forgetting to put their names. So I'm, I'm doing this from the email address, and it looks like Peach, OK? Happy birthday, Chris. Wishing you a fun-filled birthday, a year of happiness, healthiness and prosperity. I've included other famous 5th of February birthdays below, as well as a horoscope for your birthday, she says, enjoy. I don't know if you're a girl. I would guess you're a girl. Peach6 is the email at the top. But you haven't put your name. Why haven't you put your name? I want to know who you are and where you are. Where are you? Don't know. Other 5th of... Oh, yeah, it is. Here it is. Oh, silly me. I'm not reading down, am I? I'm not reading down. Ciao. She says, ciao. Pesce. Oh, I should have read the email first. Pesce is the... Uh, is the email address, and the name is Charlotte from North Carolina, USA, and she's a female. Why didn't I read it first? You see, it is a bit of a rush, isn't it, eh? If I had time, I'd read these things first. Charlotte in North Carolina, USA. Thank you so much for this, my darling. And she writes, other 5th of February birthdays, 1985. Oh, blimey, 98. Is that when he was born? Oh, he's much younger than I thought. 85, 95, 05, 06, 07, 23. Oh, that is a bit young for me. But he doesn't look 23, does he? He looks about 30, which could be a problem when he gets to 40, because then he'll look 50. Oh, I don't know if I fancy him now. Oh, he's a bit young. 1985, isn't he? Oh, do you think that's all right? <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo, Portuguese footballer. February the 5th, he shares my birthday. I wonder if you'd like to share anything else with me. What do you think? Tea, breakfast, dinner, lunch. Or what did you think I was going to say? Oh, stop it, please. This is a family programme. I've told you before. Stop it now. February the 5th, 1969. I share my birthday with Bobby Brown, born in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Vocalist, Ghostbusters. Don't be cruel. Yes. And singer, of course. Uh, what's that? Two, two something or other? Oh, what's the, what's the, um, what's the song he done? Now, oh, let me look it up. Bobby Brown. Two can play that game, wasn't it? That, that one. And uh, do you remember he had that funny haircut that used to lean over to the side? What's all that about, eh? <laughs> I also share my birthday with Duff McKagan, Michael, born in Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Who was he? He was in Guns and Roses. We like Guns N' Roses, actually. Quite like them. February the 5th, 1917, Zaza Gabor. Probably the, the one I look most like, actually. She's the one that kept getting married and always kept the houses. <laughs> Born in Budapest, actress and queen of outer space. February the 5th, 1914, Alan Hodgkin, British physicist. Won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1963, which is when I was born. And February the 5th... 1778, Robert Peel, British Prime Minister, 1834 to 1846. He founded the Tories. You're very well informed, aren't you, my love? Very impressed. Now, my horoscope for the 5th of February, which is, of course, past now. But it says here, Aquarians born on February the 5th have an intense and magnetic personality. Now, you... Dear um, listener and viewer to the show, see how much of this you think is true of me. It's probably easier for you to decide how much of this is true of me than it is for me, because you're standing outside the box looking in. I am in the box, and I can't see out of the box to look in. Do you see what I mean? So how much of this is true? And you can get back to me on the email and, and tell me what you reckon. Uh, once again, Aquarians born have an intense and magnetic personality. Paradoxically, they always have a loner mentality, although they can shine socially. They are haughty, yet lovable. They have a strong code of behaviour and generally have strong religious or spiritual beliefs. They have a thoroughly modern outlook, but are set in their ways. I would go along with all of that, actually. Do you do stars, um, Charlotte? Do, do you do stars and, and cards and all things like that? I actually know uh, someone who does the tarot cards, and I wanted to get him in on the show at some point 
and do my cards like live or, or go and meet him. And we'll do the cards live in front of you and um, we'll see what he comes out with, all right? Aquarius information for February the 5th. I should embrace uh, the special talent, mental energy and ecstasy. And she puts in brackets, not the drug. Well, I should hope not as well, my love. <laughs> You should avoid foolish risks, envy and codependency. Friends and lovers. Th these are my stars as written by Charlotte. Because the men and women born on February the 5th are private, they regard personal relationships as sacrosanct. I'm not quite sure what that... Can I look that up in the dictionary? Just a minute. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've got my large Oxford English dictionary there. Uh, what is it again? Sac what is it? Sacrosanct, S-A-C, one minute. <sighs> oh, what's that on there? Looks like a dead insect in the book. <laughs> Mama, this was my mum. She must have closed it on an insect. <laughs> ah, how vile. Um, was it S-A, what is it again? S-A, uh, hang on a minute. One minute. S-A, there it is. No, where is it? S-A-C-R-O-S. S-A-C... R-O-S-A-C-R-O. Sacrosanct. Regarded as sacred and inviolable, inviolable. Often used to imply undeserved immunity to questioning change or attack. I don't understand that, really. Um... Regarded as sacred. So I would regard a relationship as sacred. Is that what we're saying now, I think? Yeah, possibly. All right. They often learn a great deal about themselves from friendships. In romance, they struggle to commit to a lasting relationship. Oh, God, my God, that's so right. That is so right. I've, I've had terrible, terrible, terrible problems um, committing when I've had the chance yeah, oh well. <laughs> Children and family, February the 5th, the natives, often show sign of their introspective nature early. If they are not an only child, which I wasn't, it's likely there is a distance of more than a few years between themselves and another sibling. Yeah, well, my sister, we are both adopted, my sister and I. Um, so my sister is not my blood sister, okay? Uh, but that's OK. Uh, we are, as far as we're concerned, brother and sisters. And I love her very much. And the same thing goes. Uh, there are six years between us. <coughs> she's she's 40. I'm 46 now. OK. They are good at parenting. And using it with the same measure of fairness, they bring to other important facets of life. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to have been. Um, uh, had a, uh, a child or two. Um to, to bring up. I do have a son, but there's not much contact there at all. Well, there isn't any contact at all, actually. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've said on previous shows, I would rather, unfortunately, I fancy blokes. Uh, just the way it is. It's, it's how I was born. You don't decide... A lot of people think you decide to do that. You don't. You are born like it, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. What would I have liked? I would have liked the wife and the family. I really would have. You know, it's just, just that thing. And I would love to have a child or two to bring up. I would have loved that. And I've said to my sister, you know, she, I've said so many times, I said, you know, I've, I'm all right with the money. You're a bit short of money. But believe me, you're so much richer than me with your three children. It's true. People with families know what I'm saying. It's absolutely true, isn't it, eh? But I have I have this, you know, I, I'm able to come and talk to you three times a week. If I was bringing up a family, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to be sitting here, would I? I'd be passed out on the settee, tired, because I'd have to be force myself to go out and play football with a boy or or take or, or, or gone round and see some boy's dad who's been chatting up my daughter. You know. Oh well. We we can't have everything, can we? She says, since many people born on February the 5th tend towards a sedentary lifestyle, they need to... You don't know some blooming big words, don't you, dear? God almighty, I'm having... I'm getting tongue twisted here. They need a regime that includes a healthy diet and regular workout routine. 
I mean, this is me down to a T. They are sensitive individuals who generally suffer from sleep disorders. In order to restore calm, they need to refrain from caffeine. OK. Career and finances. People born on February the 5th are drawn to careers that allow them to do their work in private. Here we go again. That's me. You know, there's no one behind me telling me what to do or say or play when I'm DJing. We, uh, I do. It's true. They excel as researchers through medicine and the sciences are uh, and the sciences are often high on their list. Mm. Um, I didn't feel I wasn't interested in science or medicine at all. So that that one's not true. Um, they are indifferent about handling their finances and often turn that job over to a professional. Yeah, I have an accountant. OK. Um, dreams and goals. February the 5th people like to establish emotional boundaries. They fear being hurt and feel safe only when they have control of the relationship. Yes. Yeah, you're true. They place less importance on their personal lives than most people. Yes, that's true as well. Yet when they manage to find a relationship that works, they are spiritually and emotionally energised. And that's it. Thank you very much, Charlotte. We found your name out in the end, my darling, didn't we? <laughs> That's great. Great little piece of uh, stuff there. Thank you, Charlotte. Now, how much of that do you reckon is true of me? Let me know. Email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Hello to Mark S. from autumnlake.com. It's been a while, hasn't it, Mark? He sends about three or four emails a year, don't you? And it's, it's always a pleasure to hear from you, Mark. Hi, Chris. Just to let you know, I dropped some goodies in the post in honour of your birthday. Just passed. That is a national holiday in the UK, is it not? No, it's not. But it should be, Mark. It's a liberty, dear. The Queen has a day off. I don't have a day off. We can't afford to take time off, dear. One of them may even help you to meet that special someone. What if I have the holiday? Because it pays to advertise. Oh, I keep advertising, but nothing's forthcoming, dear. I'm waiting for that email to arrive and a picture of someone very cute and nice. <laughs> Mark says, I was sorry to hear about your cat, Tiny. Losing friends is a very sad thing, but talking about it makes all the difference. And indeed, I have been able to talk to you. Haven't I? I've been able to talk to you and you. And you as well. That's something that people... Living on... I mean... Because I was able to share the story with you, it, it was a lot easier, I'll be honest. How terrible it must be for someone elderly who has had a pet for years and years, perhaps already lost their... Wife or husband. And then they bring up the dog. And the dog dies. Do you know, it's funny talking to you just now about that. My mum had a dog. And she had it for years. The dog didn't like me and I didn't like the dog. It always growled when I came near it. We never quite worked out why. But let's just, just, some animals, they don't, you know, you don't get on with them. It's like people, isn't it? You walk, have you ever walked past someone in the street and thought, oh, I don't like you? Never, ever met them in your life. What's all that about? You never met them and yet you hate them immediately. I suppose pets and people are the same things. And she bought this dog, um with my dad and the dog carried on after dad died for a few more years and then I always remember coming home from the swimming pool or something and mum was holding the dog she'd been staying here for a couple of days and she put it outside on the grass said, what are you doing mum oh we can't walk anymore so I'm taking him to the toilet and then I think shortly after that um, the dog died and you know what? I, I think I was a bit insensitive with that one. I don't remember like consoling my mum like I did when Dad died. And actually, I should have done. Now that I've, you know, it's, hindsight is a, is an awful thing sometimes. And you look back and you see what you should have done. But remember, you know, and I, I've beaten myself up for years about things that I should or shouldn't have done. 
But the simple answer is, and I've only just come to realise this in the last couple of months, you cannot turn the clock back. So what's the point? What's the point? You can move forward. You can try and improve things, perhaps for other people. There's nothing I like better than, than helping someone get on, either in a career, in some sort of health issue, some sort of relationship thing. I like to do that. I try. I don't always succeed, but I try. And it's, it's a great thing. There's, there's a lad now who's doing a karaoke night. And he said, you, you must come. Please come and see me. I want you to come and see me because I look up to you. And he's, he's not young. He's 27, 28, I think. Dame Stuart works in a place in the East End of London. Not the best pub in the world, but I've said to you before, this job that we do, DJ and karaoke entertainers, you have to work wherever the work is. I told you I've worked in some real dumps. I've also worked in some very nice places. You take the rough with the smooth. If a job's offered, you've got a day off, you take the job and you get your wages. That's how it works. Anyway, I had the the pleasure of last Tuesday actually going down to see him because, of course, I've got Tuesdays off now. And, and I'm starting to do things again. Things that that I haven't been able to do for years. Because, like, like the emailer said um, earlier on, um, was that one who didn't put his name on the end, wasn't it? Yeah, the guy from YouTube. Um, I call you Roger, Roger Wee, or Coconut 2. I call you Coconut 2. As he said, stop and smell the roses. Well, I'm starting to slow down. I mean, the train hasn't stopped yet, OK? It's now going, at, I don't know, 50 mile an hour instead of 70. But I am starting to smell them. And I went out, and, and I, I didn't tell him I was going. I went um, there with my friend Ron, actually. He's someone, Ron, let me tell you, so many, you see, we, we digress onto the stories. I've got all these emails here. I hope you don't mind. But uh, Ron, I have to tell you, is that person that years ago I stopped talking to. Do you remember I told you? Is actually my ex about 18 years ago. He's the one that I held the candle with for so long. And then I found reason eventually, about three years ago, to cut him off completely. Well, I'm pleased to say that I've now remade contacts with him. And actually, it's good. It, it's a very good relationship. It always was a very good relationship. But I kept, I continued to hold the candle. I'm not holding the candle now. I'm, I honestly am really fine about that now. And we've, we've made friends. And it's funny because there has been gaps between our friendship relationship a few times of maybe a year, a year and a half. This time it was nearly three years. And you know what? When contact is eventually make again, we pick up exactly where we left off. And it's just strange. It is the most odd relationship. We get on like an absolute house on fire. We do. Anyway, I went round to see him last Tuesday and I said, well, can we go? Because where Stuart does the karaoke is just round the corner. I said, do you mind going down there? And he says, yeah, we'll go down there. So I went round there and there was Stuart in the corner with his, his karaoke stuff. And... Um, he jumped up from the chair and says, Chris, Chris. I said, all right. I said, come to see you do your stuff. He said, all right. Then so I watched it and he's all right. It's actually, actually not bad. He's got the personality there. He's got a room full of people and he's using that microphone to try and welcome and make everyone feel comfortable. So I was quite impressed by that. So I'm going to pop down there again in a couple of weeks and uh, see him. Because the other week, Stuart, he'd, uh, he'd just split up with someone. And unfortunately, he came down one of the places. Well, I, I, not unfortunately, that's wrong. Uh, he came down one of the places I work on Sunday night a couple of weeks ago. And he was all right at the beginning of the night. Um, but he's a bit upset because he split up with this person. And as the night wore on, he uh, was drinking more and more. And of course, by the end of the night, he was just wrecked absolutely wrecked and he went he said i'm going home now you know barely able to stand and he went 20 minutes later we arrived and i said what's up he said i've got nowhere to stay i said i don't know what i'm going to do what am i going to do chris i said right you sit out there and he's crying now i said right sit in the dressing room so i sat him in the dressing room i said look it's 20 to 2 now i said i finish in 20 minutes um if you want i've got the spare room but then what happened is his mate rung up where he was staying. You see, his mate had come with him, but he'd gone home. Somehow they'd lost each other. 
his mate rang up. I said, well, where are you? I'm in Croydon. OK, I'll take you home. Oh, thank And he was so grateful. But you see, that someone else I helped. And I felt good about that. Yes, it was out of my way, but it doesn't matter. But for him to come up to me a couple of weeks later, and say, or, or, or a little bit later, and say, please come and see me. I really look up to you and what you do. I mean, that's just, it's like having a son, isn't it? It's, I, I love it, love it. Anyway, back to uh, Mark's email. He says, I remember my grandfather's funeral was like that, like losing someone and very sad. Of course, all funerals are sad. Um, especially if you had a special relationship with that person. Either, you know, whatever that relationship was. Partner, mum, dad, friend, child. That's the worst one. Your child dying. That's wrong. It's wrong. My auntie Brenda and Uncle Malcolm, they had two children, Stephen and Michael. And um, Michael died one of their sons and my uncle Malcolm he's never got over that there were certain things that bring on the tears and Malcolm was always a very very strong character he was a really strong character and Michael died he had um, uh, Crohn's disease which is something I don't know exactly what it is um, it's something to do with your bowel. I think it's it's treatable to an extent. I'm not exactly sure what they do with that. But he was taking... Uh, ev ev sorry, every now and again, he would have to... I, I believe... OK, I might be wrong here. If we've got any medical experts, then correct me, feel free. But I believe every now and again, he had to go in hospital to have a bit more of his bowel cut out. Now, eventually, of course, this would lead to a bag, wouldn't it? And um, he decided that he didn't want to go in hospital anymore. He'd had enough of all that. So they treated him with steroids. And then one day, he'd moved to Australia to do some work in a university. He was, he was actually very clever, my, my cousin. And funnily thing is... Um, just before he went, we had started communicating by email and I'd never really had a relationship. You know, you, you don't always have a, a very close relationship with your cousins. That doesn't mean you hate them or anything like that. It's just not close, OK? So uh, our family's like fairly... We're, we're all together, but, but it's a fairly loose relationship all around, except with my sister who I'm very close to. And... Uh, he was in Australia, and one day, I always remember, Mum, Mum rung me up. I was, I was here, and she said, something terrible's happened. I said, well, Michael's died. And I'm like, Michael who? Brenda's Michael. And I said, you're joking. I said, what happened? He said, well, he had, you know he had the Crohn's disease. And I said, no. I said, I didn't, because, you know, not, not, as I say, we're not close, close-knit. I said, I didn't know that. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, he, he didn't want to go to the hospital anymore again. And they've been treating him with steroids. And he's had a brain hemorrhage. So I suppose it was very quick. Um, but I believe the brain hemorrhage, ironically, was caused by the steroids keeping him alive. That was a, quite a few years ago now. But to lose someone's child just seems so totally unfair, doesn't it? When your mum and dad dies, yes, it's, it's all very upsetting, but it kind of is the natural way. When your child dies, I think it's just awful. I mean, even worse than that is if your child is killed, murdered. How could we ever understand what that's like unless it actually happens to us. Can you just imagine if your child was murdered? You would never get over such a thing, would you? Um, Mark goes on to say his grandfather's funeral was naturally a sombre affair, but afterwards everyone went back to the church for a buffet dinner. Oh, we, we like a buffet. Come on, Mark. We As soon as you said... Look at that. As soon as you said buffet, I... Burst back into life and happiness again. Oh, yes. 
those bowls of crisps and those little ham sandwiches that are turning up at the corners once they've been out on the shelf for so long. We like a buffet. Everyone was talking, laughing and remem- remembering. Most of all, my grandmother. That, that's nice. That's nice. I remember her laughing over some story or other involving my grandfather and one of his misadventures. That, that's what I'd like. I want people to laugh and all that at my funeral. I really do. Um, I, I, I'd like, what would I like? A, a Catholic food. I would like a proper Catholic funeral. But I'd also like other people to be able to come along, maybe a, at the wake afterwards, maybe some sort of drag show. And my, my good, good friend, David Rosen... DJing. He would have to be the DJ, absolutely. The funeral itself, uh, sorry, and I thought that's how it should be, fondly remembering the person who passed on instead of feeling sad. It isn't interesting how people can share, isn't it interesting, he says, how people can share so much by simply having a conversation. Yeah, and that's what we do on this show, isn't it? And how just a short time ago, things like emails, podcasts, internet videos were undreamt of. In order to be the great connector just 15 years ago, as yeah, Suko reckons I'm a connector, you would have had to send things through the post. Just think of the cost of the postage. Oh, my God, I would never have done it, dear. No wonder you shrewdly waited for technology to catch up with you. Too right, Mark. My God, we can't be sending letters all over the place, dear. Thank you very much. Uh, I've only got time for one more email, and there's so many here. Uh, waiting to be read out. Again, it's going to be another email catch-up show on the next show. And we're going back to the 3rd of February here. I'm sorry. You know, I'll I'll try and get through. But you know I've done all emails today. Are we going to have to do another show a week? I don't know. Um, And we haven't haven't got time to do this one. Never mind. Thanks for joining me on the show today. It's Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. More emails on the next show from the 3rd of February. Keep your fingers crossed. We'll do a few more. From myself, Chris Reardon, thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.